So we're starting to work on the remote fill and part of the kit that we got had two of these hoses and four of these fittings. So we have to get these fittings attached to this hose and what you have to do to thread them is, well, cut all this excess stuff that's on these tubes. Look at this one, it's a little bit cleaner. All this like frayed edges, try to get all that off, makes it easier. And then you take this fitting and you basically jam it in and turn it to try to get it in there until it's like all the way in. This takes a lot of jamming and twisting. <laughs> I will confirm this. Jelaine is captain jammer over here. I w I wasn't even able to do the first tube. Jelaine has done all of them so far and I'm ever so grateful for her and her jamming capabilities. Now, back to the jamming. It's a long process. <laughs> so this one was proven to be like a super Booger. <laughs> Super bug. So Ben came up with a pretty good idea since he found it's out. It's lazy. <laughs> <laughs> this thing really worked. <laughs> I literally don't know why it took us this long and we both have blisters on our hands from turning and turning, but my trigger finger is good. <laughs> and we now know a better way to do it than what we were originally showing you. So now Ben's gonna take the other fitting and screw it all the way in to, and that, what that does is it stretches the tube out and secures it inside the threads that are inside the other fitting. Makes a nice tight seal. Having a vise this piece really helps and also not over tightening with this helps <laughs> this was a blessing and it was also like kind of a pain because I pushed this piece too far up onto the um, tubing and that made it really hard to get the piece that I'm tightening now started but everything's all good we're about to tighten down and hopefully in the next round we will be dialed because we still have two more of these suckers to do. Be really handy if they at least sent one end pre-done for you. But they don't, so here we are. So last night we kind of wrapped things up by um putting the fittings onto the gas line, well, just on one side, and then we actually have to mount those to the tank and run them over to where the remote fill is going to be located. That way we can cut them off and have them sized up properly. But I just wanted to discuss a couple of things that came with the remote fill that you don't necessarily need, or maybe they just sent us the wrong part. So without further ado, so this is the bleeder valve that's installed in the tank. And then with our, the kit that we purchased, they sent this, which will screw into the tank, but they didn't send anything to go into this side. And it doesn't really make sense that it's like a, a, a 90. So I'm not really sure why they sent this anyway, because you would end up having to buy one of these to tie into the um, gas line that they sent. So. Instead of using this, we're just going to use this instead, come straight out of the tank, attach our gas line to this, and then run it over to the remote fill that will be on the side of the van, where they actually sent another one of these on that end as well. So we're completely nixing this part because it doesn't make sense, and we're just going to go with these little standard to flared fittings that we bought yesterday at Lowe's. So now we're in good shape. We thought we were good to go yesterday, but we didn't realize that they sent 
the wrong parts or not even necessarily the wrong parts, just not all of the parts to proceed. We've measured the distance from the um, tank to the actual remote fill so we know where to cut the hose and we're going to try to cut it with a hacksaw because there's like little metal pieces woven into the rubber and of course cut crews here ready to go. <laughs> We spent so much time doing this by hand and we both <laughs> wound up having blisters yesterday and this seriously takes seconds and I don't know, I think um, the second one we were doing, we both had blisters on our hands within like 10 minutes and we never even got it on and so thank goodness for impact drivers. So as you do it, you want to like keep an eye on it because the first one I did yesterday, I put on way too far and then it ended up flaring the rubber out on the inside. And so it made it difficult to put this piece in because it goes like that and like flares the rubber out and then makes it seal. That way it can, the gas line can pass through this little hole right here. All right, well, I guess you can't really see that, but on the inside of this, you can see how it's like broad from here down and it's actually threaded from about here up. So you just want to drive it on it until you get to this section. And then once it's up to there, this piece threads down to right here and flares the rubber out on the inside of this and then just makes it like a really tight seal. But last night, I drove this, um, the first piece I put on so far in that I couldn't actually get the threads on this one to bite. All right, I, I've started threading this piece into here can't go too much further by hand, so I'll be tightening the rest of it with this wrench. And then that will take this from here and sit flush on this section, and then we'll have a nice tight seal. Once you tighten everything, it should look like this. And we're really trying to go in depth on this just because we couldn't find any information on really anywhere on the internet. We searched YouTube, Google, Blase Blase, but um, hopefully this helps someone else out because we really had a hard time figuring out how to attach the fittings to the gas line and then our kit not coming with all the proper accessories. That was also fun, but um, hopefully this helps someone out and you have an easier time with it than we did. We're gonna show you what everything looks like laid out on the floor so you, to kind of get a better understanding. Like I said, there wasn't um, a lot of information out there or instructions delivered with that, the actual kit. So here goes. So here's our makeshift tank. <laughs> There's the valve that actually replaces the fill valve and the other one that replaces the bleeder valve that's actually on the tank, our hoses, and then down here are the two connectors to the remote fill and then the new fill valve and the new ble bleeder valve. All right, now we're gonna put together the, the pieces that we actually can on the remote fill before we actually have to mount it to make it a little bit easier. So we're gonna put these two pieces for the bleeder valve on. Um, the one for the fill valve is a little bit bigger so we can't actually uh, get the impact driver in to actually mount it to the fan. <laughs> Fortunately, my dad has all the big boy toys. So look at this wrench, man. What size is that even? One and three quarters. One and three quarters inch wrench just for this little buddy right here. But that's what we have. That's what we're going to use. This wrench is literally like <laughs> two feet long. <laughs> All right. 
We've got the remote fill part, bracket and everything mounted. We've got all those adapters and pieces on that. And the only thing we got left is to connect these hoses and we are good to go. Finally, getting things done. After many, after many struggles and problem solving, we have finally finished installing the remote fill. As you can see, it's there. It's installed all the way up under there. <laughs> Super stoked. Thank you for watching today's video and now it's time for our tips, tricks, mistakes, and costs. First up is use an impact driver to tighten the female fittings onto the rubber hoses. It will save you so much time frustration, blisters, just I can't express how much that was a game changer for us. I don't know why it took us so long to figure that out originally, but also just be aware when you are attaching those female fittings that there's a little notch in the top right before the male fitting comes into it. Don't put it on past that notch or the rubber will shoot up into the hole where the male fitting goes and then it won't actually be able to thread. We did make that mistake so it wasn't like too huge of a deal but it was definitely a pain in the neck and it took us like an extra 15 minutes or so to actually get that piece to thread and if you went too far you would have to remove that and somehow get that piece back off. So I don't know if an impact driver would do that. We had a hard time backing it off at all. So I don't really know how to address that, but- Just don't ju do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just don't do it. That's how you address it. Easy as that. So the kit didn't come with everything that was needed. So just make sure you have everything prior to starting your project. That way you don't have to like stop, go to the store, get what you need and then come back. It just makes your project a lot longer um, it, that way. So make sure you have everything in the beginning. <laughs> Definitely, and it's kind of strange that they send you all these like wonky parts that you don't even use when really we just needed that standard thread to flared fitting. Um, I don't know why they wouldn't send that. They send you a part that that goes into, but I don't know. It was only like a dollar and change for that part too, which was not more frustrating, but it was, it was an annoyance that it was such a cheap part that they didn't send. Yeah, and there's no instructions. <laughs> yeah. That's probably the most frustrating part is the fact that there are absolutely zero instructions with this thing and you just kind of got to figure it out. Yeah, and we really haven't seen any other videos online of an actual instructional video of doing it. We have seen some other videos, but no one tells you like how to do anything. So you're like, oh, full send. So the total cost of the kit and the fitting that we had to go and get was $236.76. Thanks so much for joining us in today's video. We're Ben and Jelaine with Nomadic Visuals. Hit us in the comments with any questions that you may have on this project. We'd be glad to answer them and lend you a hand. Please consider subscribing <laughs> for more van build videos and we'll see you all in the next one.